McAvoy a big adventure? No, Brock, I wouldn't tap you. You think this is lighter news? Well, I know, but But Brock's going to get his hands on it. Sackboy Adventures is actually a very dark game. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't pen Brock to be a Sackboy big adventure uh, guy, but apparently he is. It was like my favorite game of last year. Are you serious? Uh Wow. I loved it. It's amazing. It's a great game. The whole thing is like Sackboy has parents somewhere. They can like sack love to make Sackboy just a horrible, horrible named character. (laughs) Okay, now he doesn't have parents, does he? Because that ruined Sackboy for me. Where did he come from? We all have parents. No, he was made by the holy. Yeah, he was just put in a a sack and he just existed. Okay, well, that's news to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but let's talk about the game. Okay, so, Brock, um, you got your hands on Sackboy. You, uh, has anyone else played it here? Because yeah. I have. Okay, you yeah, played I haven't it gotten well. a chance to, no. Okay, so, Brock, you were really adamant about talking about this game because you loved it so much. You said it's your favorite game of 2020. What made this game so special for you? Because I know Sackboy is kind of one of those mascots, PlayStation originally was trying to have as a PlayStation mascot. And I, I think he is, especially mm. the, when you're looking at like um, the Vita era. Like I feel like there's little a big lot planet. of little big planet. Sackboy is that. Do you think that they did something different here? Um, I know like they had the whole multiplayer experience as well. A lot more accessible than little big planet. That's for sure. Uh, it also worked a lot more smoothly. Every experience I've had with Little Big Planet has not been great. Three was okay, but it was it it, it left a lot to be desired. Um, but this is just like such a good platforming game, like on the level of uh, a Super Mario or even more so like a wow. Rayman Legends, um, mm. w- which is like one of my favorite platformers. This is just like really in that same realm. But what stood out here and really why I want to talk about this is. Uh, hands down the best soundtrack like yes. ever uh, yeah. I, I don't know any other game that you can dance along to britney spears is toxic um Wait, and what? like fight enemies yeah, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. have toxic every music? every world has a different music level yeah you know mars uptown funk uptown jungle funk, yeah. boogie uh madonna's material girl i want to play I know. I'm like, I just want to play. <laughs> I feel like when this game was marketed, like- this was not like one of those marketing points. No, yeah. I wasn't expecting it when I, I played I it. I don't know why they didn't go all in on the music. Yeah. It also like there's a future re- uh, the Futurama theme song plays um, in a level called Off the Rails, which is super rad. What? Super like this oh is God. a super fun game. It sounds very charming. And, and talking about um, like the. the- Talking about the music, like it does such a smart thing where it, once you're playing and it reaches like a certain point of the song, it doesn't just keep playing until you pro- until you progress further, and then it just keeps continuing the song. So from start to finish, it plays the entire song. But in case you're doing like collectibles or something, and you go like off the beaten path, like it will just like loop the beat of the song. It it's a really incredible way to like incorporate music without mm. like without diminishing the music as, at the same time, depending on how you play. Would you say that's something different in terms also, of what you've seen in other games, how music is handled? Yeah. Cause like, I'm trying to think of something yeah, that would be similar when you're like, describing that and I can't. Yeah, I've, I've never seen anything like this. Like it's really set to the music really makes the whole set too. Cause all the anim- mm-hmm. enemies are like dancing along with it and stuff, which is, it's just so much fun. And then like the music also pulsates out of the dual sense control. Yeah. Well, giving it like that extra level of immersion. That's and I really love that controller. Cool. It's so wicked. <laughs> That's really oh, cool. Man. So in terms of the controller, because you mentioned it, does Sackboy a big adventure use like all aspects of that controller? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, it doesn't do it in the same way that Astro Bot yeah. or Astro Boy does mm-hmm. um, to that extent, but it does really put good use to it for sure I, i'm i'm just so in awe of that control i really didn't think it would be that different um than what we've seen but like it really lives up to the hype and i really hope that other games kind of take advantage of it uh moving forward 
But yeah, like I, I, the reason I want to talk about it is I feel like this game was really kind of, I don't know, it looked like it was just marketed for kids. It, it didn't really get a lot of love. There wasn't very much buzz about it. But yeah. it is just an absolutely wonderful platform. And every level is so inventive. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just details upon details. Uh, and it does like the unthinkable. And it does make water levels fun. Um, which, which is saying yeah. something <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a great game. It's, it's a great, great game. And uh, I don't know, there's not many other exclusives right now on the PS five. I mean, Demon yeah. Souls is incredibly hard to get into and, and for a very particular type of person, um, Astro Bot like takes like an hour. Um, and really I, I, what, what else is there right now? Um, well, and that's actually, we were talking about that a couple episodes ago about, you know, that push to next gen. When you do have a next gen console within these two years, a lot of games are still not made for next gen, right? Um, right. Do you feel mm -hmm. like Sackboy, A Big Adventure was made for the PlayStation 5 and then ported down or downgraded to PlayStation 4? Or do you think they added these components that help highlight the PlayStation 5? And that's for Steve or I think Brock. it was probably scaled up. Yeah, it was, I think it's scaled, it's scaled up. up. Yeah. When you look at, like, the extents or, like, w what it does differently, like, yeah, like Brock said, it doesn't use the dual sense in the exact same way Astrobot does um, mm -hmm. to, the, like, the fullest extent. And same with, like, loading screens that are still there. It just doesn't feel like a next-gen made okay. game. It feels like it's just there because of the time it released. Okay. Okay. Still very good. Don't get me the wrong. The only game I played though that feels next gen is Ast Astrobot, though. Yes. Yeah. No. And yeah. you're absolutely no, that's right. True. Right. Um. Even I was talking about Spider-Man Miles Morales. You get the beauty of that game, yes. But then, other than that, mm. you, and a little bit of the adaptive triggers, you mm -hmm. don't really feel um like it's an it's highlighting fully the PlayStation Five, and yeah. I think that's just the reality yeah. of you know, how game development works and when we see new consoles. Now, back to Sackboy, though. One of the high... Like, I'm still blown that you guys are talking about music because that was never highlighted in marketing. Yeah, I, I didn't know about this. Do you think that was a missed opportunity? I think the marketing on this whole game yes, was... Yes, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I think the marketing on this whole Should game was just kind of music. diminished. Just kind of floundered. I don't. I don't know. They didn't really seem to put any love into it, no. and and I mean, reviews across the board were pretty positive, but they were few and far between. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Soul really took a lot of that thunder. Yeah, which is strange yeah. because it's again, it's like it's a very hardcore game. It, it's mm -hmm. a fantastic game. Again, it's one of my also my one of my favorites, but it is a very hard game, and, and especially compared to Sackboy, it's got um, local co-op. Like I mean, my girlfriend loved playing it together because it's just really fun and accessible. Well, and that's one of the I think for me when I saw Sackboy, and I was like, okay, this is a game I could play with my boyfriend. You know, like this is yeah. something we could play mm. together. And there's very few of those co-op experiences um, now. A lot of them are online, right? How was that multiplayer experience? Mm. It, it's pretty seamless. Um, it, it's really fun. You can just kind of drop in, and your character, like your friend or whoever you're playing with, can collect their own goodies and create their own little sack boy outfits and stuff that are all like ridiculous like my sack boy can be like a robot with a stupid wig and it's like fully <laughs> customizable that makes it a little bit more fun uh and then like i i just find it really works well like the characters can only go so far but also like every mission changes just a bit if there is two players so sometimes it remind it you need like two people to pull up stuff and whatnot so it adapts really quickly and really um really smartly now i'm looking at the gameplay here um and like this is just I'm now rethinking about everything I thought of when I first saw the trailer. I know it's so adorable, right? Um, but when I first saw this trailer, I remember a lot of comparisons to Mario games. It looked like this was Sony's um, kind of jump to make a com a real competitor to say um, Mario 3D, right? Sure. How do you think they fare um, if you were to compare the two? Mm. And this was like more because of the music. Out. <laughs> really? I think this is it, it has toxic in it. And I love to see Mario <laughs> games. I think they're excellent. But this is killer. Yeah. But the Mario games don't got toxic in it. <laughs> you know how Mario <laughs> don't got toxic, don't got like jungle <laughs> The Koopas are jamming. Yeah. Mario game. <laughs> like expect the Mario game to be good, not really do much new. Um, right. 
I want more from them. I want more from the Mario games, but I didn't expect this at all from Sackboy, like at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think they're comparable in terms of like the gameplay. I think, I think this is Sony's answer to Mario, uh, like at least in terms of a platformer. Um, it's, it's so crazy to see at like what they could do just simply by getting rid of the create your own game mechanic that a little big planet had and just focus on, let's make a, a solid platformer. I, I think again, I you have to remove like all the nostalgia and familiarity with Mario to kind of put those two together. But w- once you do, once you start actually playing uh, Sackboy, it's a really fun game. And I think yeah, talking about like w- why it got lost in the shuffle, I think a lot of people saw what Astrobot did and was like, okay, well, this comes free with the game mm-hmm. or with the console, so why would I bother going for this other game? Yeah. You and Sackboy released at launch with the PlayStation 5 or a week after or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Launch. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so I could, yeah, I understand now why it definitely got lost in the shuffle, especially because, you know, everyone was looking to also buy Miles Morales. Like, when you're thinking right. of PlayStation games, it was Astro, Astro Boy was already on the system. Um, and then you have Miles Morales, which everyone was buying the PlayStation yeah. 5 for, yeah. right? Um, now, what do you think they're going to do with Sackboy and Lil Big Planet? Like, do you think now they just continue with this version of Sackboy? Did it did um, it sell decently well? Like, per, we don't have kind of, numbers. No, nothing like that. No. Okay. And that could also be a fault if it didn't sell well to the lack of marketing around this yeah. game. Um, because I was, I was actually, when they did the PlayStation showcase, I was really excited about Sackboy. And then I kind of forgot about it because of everything else that I was seeing around the time of launch. It was a very, very busy time for, you have the PlayStation 5, you have the Xbox, you have like, it was more about the consoles for me around that time than the games. Mm -hmm. Um, but do you think they continue and kind of leave little big planet behind in that whole create your game, uh, your own game mechanic? Um, completely in the dark or now do they continue with both of these types of um sackboy adventures i'd like to say that they made they've made so many little big planet games at this point and now like doing sackboy that the games probably don't cost that much and they probably make enough money for places to just be like yeah go ahead like make another one you know like mm-hmm. I, I i could see there end up being like either another little big planet or another like sackboy adventures or something I couldn't see another little big plan only because they're so focused on dreams. Which is uh, kind true. Of an yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's true. Everyone forgets about dreams, but dreams is so wicked. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a shame that not enough people are playing it, which leads yes. me to kind of believe that. I don't know. I'm kind of trepidatious to see what Media Molecule, the, the developer behind dreams, will do, if anything, after this, because this has been a long investment almost six seven years since they made like another console game with so i don't know i i I think that uh sackboy's future belongs to sumo digital it's just going to be a platformer at this point yeah if there's another game that like got totally like shit on by sony it's just dreams like that came out finally and just got lost in the shuffle like what a huge game that was going to be and then i don't know just kind of stealthily dropped and you never heard about it yeah, Sony has some sort of like marketing issue when it comes to like the smaller games, like the mid-size games, like we're seeing mm. with Sackboy Dreams is another one. Um, Medieval, even when they did the remake for Medieval, no one talked about it when it came out. Yeah, I forgot that even came out. There you go. <laughs> Case in point. And that's like there I, like that's I had no scary. idea. But I feel like Medieval as well is it it's very nostalgic, right? Like that's something you kind of would want to market it. You know exactly who your audience is. Um, even if it is a niche audience, you, you pull at, there are, you know, nostalgia strings um, with that. Right. Um, And and you're right, Steve. Like, I feel like they do have kind of this issue with marketing medium sized games. They're very heavily focused on their huge triple a exclusives that, their other gems kind of get lost in that shuffle. And it, it's going to be interesting how they handle that, especially with, you know, you have Microsoft that's bought out all these studios, big and small. They are kind of like, I, I would say, the indie home um, yeah. for a lot of console players. It's going to be interesting to see if 
PlayStation kind of ramps that up, especially because they they've put focus on creating an answer to Game Pass. Sure. Um, and for me, the easiest way to create an answer with Game Pass is you put a lot of indies um, on it, right? Like a lot of your indie titles or a lot of your smaller exclusive titles on it, right? Um, but you have to market it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, going back, Concrete Genie was another one that yes. just got buried by Sony. It was so unfortunate because I, I love that game. That game was incredible. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think is Brock cutting out here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. what did you say, Sorry. Brock? Did you repeat that again? I, I was never a big fan of Concrete Genie. I, I thought it was a. I, I thought it was like cutesy, but not mm -hmm. not for me. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, I after hearing Toxic, how you sold me, Brock. <laughs> you sold me. Um, That's I, all I needed. Yeah, I just need Toxic. I honestly didn't know anything about the music, and I would have definitely had that on my to buy list. Um, if I knew music was a huge part of how you experience the game. Um, and it's just, I, I don't understand why they didn't market that. I'll never understand. But um, yeah, I'm going to hop in. You've convinced me. Everyone try a Sackboy A Big Adventure because it's apparently better than anyone knows. Yeah. I got a question for Brock, who, who's, you know, played it extensively. When do we see Sackboy become Sackman? Oh! <gasps> Ooh, that that should be next. It should be a really gritty reboot of Sackboy <laughs> and Sackboy Fox. Oh no, no, no! I was waiting to save my f bomb for the very end. The very end. <laughs> and there we go, bro. Never be on this podcast again. I um, set him up. He knocked it down. I know he did. He did. But that is Brock to do that. Yeah. But you bring up a big point. Other than like him being a man. Um, <laughs> I want to say, will we see collaborations? I, I like how only Steve got that one. Yeah. Um, will we see collaborations with Sackboy and other IPs? Like, do we see a Spider-Man collab with Sackboy? Maybe Spider-Man no, or something like I that don't. in Sackboy, but yeah. not. That's what I'm saying. Like, do we yeah. see Spider-Man like yeah. outfits come into like a outfits? Sackboy? Sure, I could That'd see that. Awesome. I think outfits that's stuff. that's kind of a no-brainer. They have all these IPs. Yeah. You know, it just makes sense to have, um, and I think they actually might have done that with Little Big Planet. Was it? I think possibly. It have, yeah, I, I, I feel like yeah. if you're gonna do any yeah. sort of crossover between PlayStation properties uh, with Sackboy, it should just be like the Astrobot, like mm. bring them together, make like a little fun co-op game or something like that, a co-op platformer with the Astrobot and Sackboy. Ah, that that's a good one. Uh, Zach's in chat says they did a collaboration with Kratos, and I think they did an Uncharted one as well. Mm, yeah, that Planet. sounds familiar. Yeah, so I, I would want to see that come back. Sure. Yeah. Brock, you say something? Sackboy is not very cool. Oh, he's like <laughs> a little like baby, essentially. I think that's his problem too. Like, he's not a a really cool character. He's cutesy. He's too cutesy. He could the baby yoda the <laughs> grogu of playstation i would yeah. like to see him in astrobot i think that makes perfect sense i think we gotta get sack boy with a white claw in his hand mm -hmm. <laughs> and then brock mm -hmm. needs to tattoo sack him yeah. sack and, boy's first drink yeah and then he'll <laughs> go viral then he'll go viral um, thank you guys so much for joining this hectic, chaotic uh, podcast that we had today. But you know, when we have Brock on the podcast, it's always going to be crazy and lots of fun. So thank you, Brock, for joining us. Before you go, I need to know where can everybody find you? What do you have coming up? Uh, and what can we expect from you? Um, they can, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Don't. Um, you can find <laughs> Oh if Brock has to bite his tongue, know, that means like, it was something I, pretty I was crazy. I was thinking, I was like, do I give Brock a chance to talk again? I don't know. <laughs> but I did. And it might have uh, been a mistake. You can, you can find me on Twitter at Brock McLaughlin. I think my name's spelt like right under there, so you can figure it out. MC Laughlin. Um, yeah, just that's where I usually am. I, I respond to the, the fans there. 
Uh, I don't check my OnlyFans very much, so don't bother there. Just Twitter. Just he's always open on those DMs, you know. Brock's that that person. Mm -hmm. I see all the pictures, every single one of them. So send them to him through Twitter. <laughs> That's it. You can find me. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, uh, Steve, we are well into the new year. Yeah. So I, I have to hope that you have some articles coming up as well. I do. Uh, you know, this week, Hitman 3 is coming out. So I'm looking at uh, getting some features, some guides on that. I'm stoked for this game. So I'm going nice. to be cranking out some stuff for that. Can you do me a favor and yes. pay attention to if there's any 007 Easter eggs? I'll like do maybe that. I wonder if they're going to hint to anything in the game. Like, just a, to, like a golden you know? gun. Yeah, yeah, like a golden gun or maybe hint to, I want the whole theory, tinfoil hat theories of anything that you could pull from Hitman 3. Bring them you to this it. podcast. You got it. We'll Thank do. you. Thank yeah. you. And remember, you can check out any of uh, Steve's articles as well as all of our articles from our amazing writers on our website, squadstate.com. Caboose, you're really excited for the Mortal Kombat news. I think you recently put out a video about your mm -hmm. whole thoughts. Um, you delivered some of those thoughts here, but I'm pretty sure everyone should check them out. What else do you have coming? Uh, pretty much that. Just keeping an eye on when this Mortal Kombat movie is going to give us a trailer, when we're going to get a little more news from it. Uh, still watching out for the Avengers game, and hopefully we're going to get some more information about that. We're all trying to figure out when this Hawkeye DLC is going to drop, and it's starting to look like it might not be this month, which is uh, a little worrisome. Uh, I'm worried about that game, but just keeping an eye out on all that. You know, still as well doing my Mortal Kombat tournament over on Twitch.tv slash Caboose, Champions of the Realms Season 2. So that's a lot of fun. You can check me, YouTube.com slash Caboose, and Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. Oh, I Boots love of the servers come on for Avengers. <laughs> uh, the not, for long, <laughs> not for long. Not for long. is the only person. He's just waiting there all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, now, any yes. day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so sad. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be uh, looking out for your updates on the Mortal Kombat movie because that has me very interested for you mm -hmm. at home. You could uh, catch all the memes that I tweet and all the random stuff I tweet. <laughs> this is Camco. I'm also going to be uh, probably, I'm actually going to play Final Fantasy VII the remake and try to find some memeable moments in that. Nice. I haven't fully played through the remake yet, so I, I got to finish it. I got to finish it. I it's finally great. put Miles Morales down um, for the fourth time, so I'm not, I'm not touching that game again. <laughs> I'm not touching that game again. Um, but for those of you at home that want to keep up to date on everything squad, please check out our website, squadstate.com, as well as on Twitter at squadstate. We got all the goods. We got all the latest. Uh, so stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching and enduring all of the chaoticness that is the <laughs> podcast. We will see you next Monday. And thanks, Brock, again for joining us. Peace, guys. <laughs>